Good morning, friends, as we gather here this morning to worship God and offer our prayer and praise. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Won't you join by gathering your service booklet that has been sent to you as we offer our prayer and praise here this morning. Uh, the presence of the Reverend Charlotte Malla from St. James Roseland, the Reverend Robert Clifford from All Saints downtown in Windsor, the Reverend Elise Chambers from St. Andrews in Harrow and Christ Church in Colchester, and myself, the Reverend Paul Poulton from St. Augustine of Canterbury. It's wonderful to have you all here this morning as we celebrate the great Feast of the Resurrection uh, as we celebrate here this morning. Won't you join in prayer, starting out with our call to worship this morning. Beloved Church, behold the victory of our God. Jesus, our Lord, has conquered the grave. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this place resound with joy. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Hallelujah. Thanks. Thank you, God. God. Won't you join in the singing of our opening hymn, Thine Be the Glory, in your common praise hymn. Christ, 
Reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by the power of the Spirit, the moon lay the stone and reveal to us the word of life. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God showed no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John Mount, now how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about good and healing all who are present to death, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as a king, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a reading of Psalm 1. Give thanks for he is good. His mercy and forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is triumph. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord is triumph. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hear me with the blessed. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered to me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the government rejected has become the chief stone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. So if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our next hymn, our gradual hymn, is in your hymn book number 242 or in your printed bulletin. Won't you join in singing?
also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up and in a place by itself. The other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. She wept, she bent over, and she looked into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round, and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, you have carried him away. Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them, that she had seen these, she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. St. Augustine or anywhere else that you've seen my gatherings uh, knows that this song requires standing up and sitting down. Now, I know most of you are sitting at home and there's no way for me to know for absolute certain that you're standing up and sitting down, but Jesus knows. So, uh, if you are a person who belongs to All Saints or St. James, you're the Alleluia. So you're going to stand up when the Alleluia's are being sung. If you belong to Harrow, Colchester, uh, pardon me, St. Andrews, Christ Church, or St. Augustine of Canterbury, you're going to stand up when the praise of the Lords are being sung. If you're not a member of either of those churches, uh, you can figure that out for yourselves. All right, but pick one part or the other. And Jonathan's going to play this another couple of times, but I should warn you right now, it gets faster as he gets into more times. So that side is the Alleluia's, this side is the praise of the Lords. Let's see if we can make of this, Jonathan.
I got my exercise in for the week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, covering my breath. <laughs> um, as is customary in the Christian Church at uh, Easter, um, we will either uh, bring our candidates for baptism uh, to a font, the one that I'm sitting to here at all uh, or uh, if there are no candidates for baptism, we will renew all of our baptismal vows. So this year, we've invited you to have a bowl and a pitcher of glass of water. Um, uh, in order to help celebrate uh, this part of this service. Uh, so please uh, gather those for you on the coffee table or the uh, ottoman or uh, wherever it is yourself. Uh, socially isolated um, from those who would normally celebrate this morning with you. Um, and so as we go through, please do respond um, and uh, pray over the water with us as we pray over the water in each of our locations. Um, and uh, have in your heart the intention uh, that this is a gathered community renewing it, um, and we will indeed do that, because God hears and gives all Turning back to our service bulletin on the second half of page three. It's close. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death, by it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship in him, within him in faith. We pray that all who have passed through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To whom, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may run with him to a new life. Now that our Lenten of David has ended, let us renew the promises we made in baptism, when we rejected Satan and all his works, and promise to serve faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm the renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we gather here through these next series of questions, these promises that we make through our baptismal covenant, 
We thought it would be prudent for us to take a moment today as each of us asks a different question to offer a bit of a reflection on what we feel Easter means to each of those questions, whether Easter in general or Easter this year. So I have the privilege of doing two questions. Actually, I have the first question and the third question. The first question is, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? And the second question is, will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God? For me this year, this has been particularly significant as we've made our journey through Easter. Because continuing in the apostles' teaching, continuing in the apostles' fellowship, in the breaking of bread, of course, and in the prayers, has been a lot more difficult than it ever has been for the church deployed instead of the church gathered in a building. How do we proclaim by word and example the good news of Christ when we're not brought together regularly to be fed, to be uh, nourished in the scriptures, to be fed by God's word? And yet here we are, a people of God gathered together, a people of God proclaiming the good news of the resurrection. Facebook was alive this morning with Alleluia, he is risen, and Christ the Lord is risen today. People who have maybe never heard the good news of the gospel are hearing it in a way that they've never heard before. So how do we continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? Well, I think we're doing that. And I think this has been an incredible blessing this year. And granted, I, I know I mentioned in my message from the truck yesterday that this is maybe a once-in-a-lifetime Easter, where we're separated like this, and we sort of hope it's a once-in-a-lifetime Easter where we're separated like this, but it's also a once-in-a-lifetime Easter. This is an opportunity for us to proclaim the good news, not as a brick building with stained glass windows, but as the Church of God deployed. So I'm going to ask those two questions of you right now. The Church of God deployed. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. And will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I, I will, will, with God's help. help. And so I have the honor of asking the third question you'll hear today. That question being, will you persevere in, re in evil and whenever you fall into it? Repent and return to the Lord. Um, we, we were discussing the DVD of the questions, and, and, um, and this one was left open. I took it. Uh, and it's a tough one. Uh, find uh, Easter in, in this because it is about a tough thing. Um, we're all sort of facing uh, tough things, whether it's uh, the temptations presented by Sam at home and, and whatever those temptations are, um, whatever the evils of that existence uh, are for you, um, if getting out of your house is a way to avoid uh, problems, then that isn't as much an option for you right now. But I find East in the second half of that um, in the um, Acknowledgement, we're all going to, uh, because we're all going to be tempted and and uh, and fail in our people. Um, and as a church, we acknowledge that of ourselves um, and those around us. Um, I I have frequently, uh, and I I'm not where I got the book. Um, I frequently referred to the uh, to people who question it. Uh, question my involvement in it. Um, as a hospital or a sinner, and not a museum for the site. Um, the acknowledgement that we make for ourselves, for ourselves is that we will um, slip up. And that is that um, repentance and return to the Lord is always And so, will you? persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you do fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, I will with God's, God's help. help. I have two questions that center on the relationship. We are what others 
see the Christ in this world. Christ calls us to see others as God sees them, all wonderfully and beautifully unique. We all have good days, bad days, days we wish things were different around us. And we're called to make a difference in this world, to love others, to treat them well, to respect and honor them, to call peace into our relationships through which others can experience God's love. And so, will you seek and serve Christ in all things, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with, with God's, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, I will with God's, God's help. So that leaves me with our final question, a question about sustaining the earth, sustaining our environment. And when I think about um, the environment in Easter, I think that it is completely and totally by accident that we um, are fortunate enough to live in a country, in a place where Easter and spring tend to coincide. So um, as we um, look at Easter being the um, submersion in the tomb and re-immersion out of the, the waters through baptism, um, we also witness in our world the um, dormant trees coming back into bloom, um, those first crocuses and, and daffodils and tulips poking their heads out of the ground. Um, here in Windsor, it's a little earlier than I'm used to, but um, I know where I'm from. I think there's, there may be some snow yet, um, and that's okay, but it's still the same thing. We're still looking for that that first bud or that first bloom. Um, and I think that's the same straight across our country. We're for, very fortunate here that that's where Easter lands in our um, season. Um, this year in particular though, I think about um, the immersion of new ways of doing things. So um, I think about the um, reports of the environment being blessed by this um, staying at home business. I, I think about the, the smog advisories this summer, I'm hoping they're gonna be less. I'm, I'm looking at the um, environmental impacts. I saw something on the, on the interwebs the other day about um, turtles, endangered turtles nesting um, in, on abandoned beaches when we're not there to, to destroy that environment for them. Um, and, you know, all of these things that we ought to be doing um, in taking care of creation, typically, that maybe we forget to do, or we, out of our selfishness, don't do, that we ought to do. Um, the pollution levels being um, lowered with less driving, that sort of thing. Um, these are the things that we are called to do regularly, and I think this Easter in particular, um, we are being shown that we actually can make a difference in our environment. We can make a difference to, to nature and the world around us um, if only we just tried a little bit. Um, every, every little step counts, every little um, change counts. Um, you know, I'm a straw user. I'll admit it, I am a straw user. Uh, but I've started carrying my stainless steel straws. Um, you know, I met turtles. They're beautiful. We don't want to kill them. So, um, we're, you know, we're called to look after our environment um, as part of our baptismal covenant um, and as part of inhabitors of this place that we share with other human beings and the rest of creation. And so I ask you, will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect and sustain and renew the life of the earth? I, I will, will, with God's help. God. Let us pray. God the Creator, rock of our salvation, He has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. May He keep us faithful to our calling, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Won't you join in the singing of our next hymn?
Now all the vault of heaven was out. Hear our prayer. For our planet Earth, 
that people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge, hope, and hospitality. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to forms of life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that together we may dwell in harmony. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our enemies, that we may love them and be agents of reconciliation in the name of Jesus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Almighty God, with these prayers we offer, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, use us for the sake of the gospel of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. So typically at this point in a worship service, we would start an offertory hymn. The sides people would make their way to the front of the church and gather the collection plates and start wandering through the community to collect your offering to God. This year, of course, that's not an option. But it's still appropriate for us to make an offering to God. So I know that your rectors had asked you to make sure that you had a, a pen and a piece of paper handy with you as we make this journey this morning. I would invite you today, instead of offering a financial gift into a brass, a brass plate as it goes by, I would invite you instead to make a personal offering of thanksgiving to God. I invite you to take a moment, and we'll pause for a moment, and I would invite you to just write down on that piece of paper something that you are truly thankful for. Something that maybe you've never thought of before, something that's a new idea, something that you've maybe not said out loud that you're thankful for. And I want you to write that down on that piece of paper, and I want you to reflect on that, and make an offering to God this morning, not of some sort of financial offering, but instead, a true, sincere, heartfelt thanks be to God for the resurrection as we make an offering of thanksgiving today. And as you compose your thoughts and commit that to paper and commit that to God, let us pray. God has given us life in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In gratitude, let us offer our hearts, thoughts, hopes, and dreams to God's care. Our offertory hymn this morning is in your printed bulletin, The Day of Resurrection.
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and those you love this Easter tide and always. Amen. Amen. Would you join in the singing of our closing hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.